By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the second match played in the Brawl Timmy Talks tournament. And of course we're playing Brawl old school, don't worry, it's still old school. And in this matchup, we're going to look at uh, Roman, who's playing with Xira Arian, and he's taking on Bus, who's playing with a Soul Canard the Swamp King deck. So that's pretty sweet. And in case you're wondering, what is Brawl? What is going on? I would recommend you to check the description below. There you can find all the rules information, any link to the tournament website with deck photos of all the decks, well, almost all the decks, that participated in this fabulous tournament. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that you can also skip that. You can skip the intro, you can skip everything, and you can go straight to the games. The best way to do that is check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, boom, and you're straight in the action. You're at game number one, and you can just watch the gameplay. Now, what you'll find there as well are the deck deck sections of the video, and that's actually where we're gonna start right now, and we're gonna start with the deck of Roman. Let's take a look at his Xira Arian build. And here we see the deck of Roman. So Roman's commander is Xira Arian, and let's maybe first zoom in on what she does. So one green, one red, and one black. So when you get the right mana, you can have this puppy out at turn three. It's a one, two with flying, and it's got a pretty cool ability for three mana. So green, red, and black, you can tap it and target player draws one card. So it's really, really good. If you can get the mana, it's very, very solid. And you know, you can go for card advantage with this card and you can also go for speed. And I think that's the combination that Roman is hoping for. When you're looking at his deck, there are actually a lot of cards that you can kind of wonder about, like, are they really good in a Brawl um, kind of setup? Because you would expect the games to take a little bit longer, and he's playing with quite a lot of aggressive creatures. I'm talking about Kurt Ape, uh, Argovian Pixies, uh, Script Sprites. But then again, I mean, he's got the Xira, so if he has the right mana, he can just draw into more cards, and in the meanwhile, he can just start attacking with those cheaper creatures. I think the problem that I usually have with those like one drop and two drop bodies is that as the game continues, they get weaker and weaker. So I think the strategy here for for Roman is to get like get his creatures out quickly, try to ramp up. Remember, he's playing with green. I think one of the main reasons to play with green is because it gives you access to that mana ramp, right? You've got Lanawar Elves, you've got Birds of Paradise, you've got Elves of Deep Shadow. You also have Untamed Wilds that is also in this deck. I think Untamed Wilds is still underplayed. I understand why, because especially in, in, in like the regular old school formats, people tend to go for Ice Storm over Untamed Wilds, but don't underestimate Untamed Wilds. One green and two to cast for a sorcery from Legends, and you can look up any basic land you want and put it into play untapped. So you get a land that you can use back for your Untamed Wilds, so you still have a mana open. So. If there could be a scenario for, for Roman where he finds, for example, his Lanawar Elves, and then he can play a turn two, um, you know, Untamed Wilds, and he can use that to find the land that he needs to maybe cast his Xida Adian, then he can start drawing cards in, you know, turn four. He can play Xida in turn three, and he can start drawing extra cards in turn four. That can be actually be kind of dangerous. Like, card advantage is a real thing, you know, especially in these Brawl matchups where you only have one of each. So if you can find that one special card you're looking for, you're pretty solid. Um, if we're looking at the rest of the deck, by the way, we also see some um, some heavy hitters in the deck. We see a Shivan Dragon, beautiful. We see an Urnum Jin, just four mana for a four or five, always powerful. We also see um, a Triskelion. I think Trike is just great because it's usually two for one. It comes into play six to cast. I know it's steep. It's a 1-1, one, one. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters, so it's a 4-4, four, four, and you can remove those counters, and here's where the card gets really good, and for each counter you can deal one damage to any target. And in reality, it usually means that you can use your trike to kill a couple of creatures of your opponent and to swing with it, you know, and that's where it gets its value. Um, we also see some burn in this deck, we see pyrotechnics, we see fissure, which I think is cool, not burn, but you know, it destroys a creature, but no direct damage. We see Fireball, we see Disintegrate, uh, we see Detonate, which is really, really nice as artifact removal. Again, a card that's not being played that much because it's a sorcery. So that means it's really difficult for this card to deal with a Mishra's Factory. But of course, in this format, you know, you only see one Mishra's Factory. So I understand the Detonate in this build. 
Okay, this is the deck of Roman. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this brew. And now let's continue with the deck of his opponent. Let's take a look at the Sol Kanar deck of Boss. And here we see the deck of Boss. And man, I have to admit, I'm a little bit impressed with this deck. It's looking really, really solid. Uh, before I start with all the powerful cards here, let's just start with the commander. So we've got Sol Kanar, the Swamp King. One blue, one black, one red, and two for a 5-5. Five, five. That are great stats for five mana. Obviously, the drawback here is the casting cost, right? You have to have these three colors. 5-5, five, five, Summon Legend, obviously, Swamp Walk, and another upside, Soul Canard Controller gains one life each time a black spell is cast. I think this commander is going to be a killer against Roman. Roman is playing with black, so Swamp Walk is going to be relevant. The Life Clause is going to be relevant. And you cannot terror this creature because it's black, so that's another... Great ability when you're playing another black mage. And of course, Roman is playing with terror because that's kind of an auto-include when you're playing with black. Talking about that, we do not see Boss playing with terror, by the way. He's made some interesting decisions. Maybe first talk about, you know, the elephant in the room here. You're playing three colors. You're not playing with green. Green is great at getting you the colors of mana that you want and ramping up and all that stuff. But I think Boss has something better. He's got the three Moxen in this deck the Ruby, Sapphire, and the Jet, and they're really going to help him. Another thing he's got is more power. Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, and Time Twister. Those cards are going to help him to find the mana that he needs. And um, just in general, this card, this deck is looking very, very powerful. He's playing with a lot of artifact creatures. And, well, actually a lot, not that much, but it looks like a lot. But he's actually just playing with four artifact creatures. But still, it's, it, he's just not playing with a lot of creatures, I guess, when you look at this deck. I mean, he's playing Solkanar, of course. He's playing the, the the four artifact creatures, including Jade Statue, which I think I always love to see that card. I think it's great. Um, he's playing Often Troll, Set Troll, Serenity Befreed, and Atok. Now, the trolls are kind of hard to get rid of, right? They both have that regeneration clause, making it really annoying to get rid of them. Luckily, you know, Roman is playing with that Terra, and he's also playing with the Fisher and a Disintegrate, so he's got some weapons to deal with that. Um, Atok, I think, is really strong in this build. One red and one from uh, Antiquities, a 1-2 body, and you can sacrifice an artifact to give it a plus two, plus two, and we see quite a lot of artifacts. There's a nice little um, synergy happening here with Atok and Tetravis, which is kind of nice. I, I would like just like to highlight that. Tetravis, six to cast, is kind of like the twin brother, well, not the twin, but let's say the brother of Triskelion. It's also from Antiquities, six to cast for a 1-1 one, one with three plus one plus one counters on it. So it's a 4-4 four, four flying creature. And then in your upkeep, you can remove one of those plus one plus one counters or all of them, it's up to you, and you get a 1-1 one, one flyer in return. So in theory, you can get the counters off and then you have four 1-1 one, one flying artifact creatures. You could feed those to the ATOC, giving it plus eight plus eight, right? So you can deal damage for like nine if you can get the ADOC in in for damage. So that is a pretty big deal. And um, I think if I'm looking at this deck, if Boss can ramp up, if he can find the Moxen early, I, I think he's going to win it. I think he's going to win the game. It's a simple, in my opinion, as simple as that. Uh, you know, of course, unexpected things happen all the time in Magic, which is great. But I'm just saying, if he finds those Moxen early and he can start ramping up into his bigger spells... He's going to win this one. I think if Roman wants to win this, he really has to rely on the speed of his deck. I think what's going to be really difficult for Roman is facing those power cards as well, you know, because you, you may think, okay, he's playing three colors, right, boss, and he's not playing with green, so maybe he's going to have a, a problem finding the right colors of mana. I mean, the thing is with power, you can draw extra cards, you can take extra turns, and of course you've got the Moxen for power fixing, so, uh, color fixing, sorry. So I think... I think it's going to be fine in that regard. Of course, it can always happen that you kind of miss a color. And there's also some land removal, I believe, in the deck of Roman. So maybe if he can use his land removal wisely, he can cut off a color. That would be great. But I think it's going to be tough. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, I noticed the Abyss. I think the Abyss is pretty good in this deck. And remember, um, he's also playing Demonic Tutor. So he can always tutor for the Abyss if he doesn't draw into it. So a tutor kind of always means all your silver bullets. And I think the Abyss is a silver bullet goes times two, right? You've got more chance of drawing into it. And maybe you're wondering, what is a silver bullet? A silver bullet is basically a card that in the right situation can decide a game, just like Blood Moon, for example. Against the right decks, Blood Moon is a silver bullet. It's not always decisive, though, so you need a specific card at the right time. So I think the Abyss is a really good card against, uh, against the deck of Roman because Roman is playing a creature-heavy deck. And he doesn't play with a lot of artifact creatures. So that is where the Abyss really, really shines. 
Um, looking at the rest of the deck, the main thing I notice is the, is the cards that are not in here. And with that, I mean he's playing blue, but he's not playing with counterspell. And I love that. I love I love it when blue players do that because you're always expecting when you're playing against a blue player, like he's got two blue open. Oh man, what am I gonna do? Oh man, am I gonna play it? Am I not gonna play it? And how cool is it for Buffs that he's not playing with any counters? So he he's, if he can just keep two blue open just to bluff, usually it works. So I'm sure Buffs is gonna do that. What I also like, um, uh, or, or what I notice, is the fact that he's not pl playing with Control Magic or Steel Artifact. I think, but correct me if I'm wrong here, Buffs, that you've made that decision because you don't wanna play with a lot of double colors in your deck. You're already playing with three colors. You don't wanna make it more complex than it is, and you've got great other options. Um, so yeah, this is the deck of Bus. For me personally, Bus is really the favorite here. Uh, I think it's going to be tough for Roman. He can win, but it's going to be tough. For me, Roman is the favorite. Let me know in the comments below, like what deck do you think is best? What deck do you think is going to win? And now that we've talked about both of these decks, it's time to go to the match. Let's go to game one. Game number one, here we go. Roman sitting at the top of his Xira deck and at the bottom we see Bus with his Soul Canard of Swamp King. Roman's on the play, starting with a basic forest passing turn here. And there's some glare. What card is that? Okay, that's a Mishra's Factory double mox here. Sapphire and Jed, oh, that means he's already in trouble. There we see the Candelabra of Tanis, a really cool artifact. Um, you can pay X and then untap X lands. It's really sweet. Just one to cast. Okay, that's better, boss. Thank you. Let's see what Roman can do here. Hopefully, he can at least find a land going through his cards. That's a pretty explosive start from boss. You know, that's, that's pretty tough. So there is... Okay, Mana Vault. Actually, not too bad. He probably just drew into that Mana Vault or else he would have played it turn one. So we see a Swamp and a Mana Vault. So next turn, he can probably have six mana. I wonder if he can do something with that. And Boss now looking at his hand played a mountain. So he's already got the colors he needs to cast Solkanar. He just needs one more land. And he's there tapping three here. And oh, playing Stone Rain. Taking care of that swamp. That is very deadly because he's already kind of ahead on the mana curve. And uh, now he's getting even further ahead. There we see that mountain. That is too bad, or else Roman could have cast Xira and started to draw into some extra cards. Now we see a Swamp here, meaning Bus can now cast Solkanar the Swamp King. It's a 5-5. Five, five. That's exactly what he's going to do. So how this works, your commander is always in what they call your command zone. And um, when you play it out, you kind of get this 5... Well, in this case, the Solkanar the Swamp King, right? So when the Solkanar dies... Bus can decide if he wants to put it in his graveyard or back into the command zone. When you put it back into the command zone, it gets a counter. So here we see a fireball. We actually see that happening. So now there's a counter. That means the next time that Bus wants to cast Solkanar, he has to pay two more. The problem here for Roman is that Bus almost has all the mana he needs to cast a Solkanar again. And Roman has a tapped mana vault now that actually is going to hurt him. He's still on 20 though. Both players still on 20, of course. And tapping six, there's a Tetravis. What a start here for Boss. That's just insane. Oh my. This is so difficult here for Roman. Having to deal with this. So he's going to drop to 19. Oh, this is really tough. This is the worst possible scenario for Roman. Like what I said in the deck deck, if Boss can ramp up with the Moxen, he's pretty much toast. That's exactly what's happening here. If he gets another land drop, he can play out the Solkanar again. He can already swing in for four this turn. Maybe if Roman has a Shatter, you know, that's something. And he's animating now. Gonna attack for six here. Oh my god. Roman, do you have a Shatter? Play it now. Gonna attack for six. Looks like Roman's gonna go through the cards. Does he have an answer here? Looks like he doesn't. He's going to take six. The screen is not great. He's now on 13. And there we see a Greed. And actually, a Greed is perfect for Boss here. So it's an enchantment from Legends. This is, I think, a fourth edition version. He can pay one black, pay two life, and draw a card. And that's, of course, great because, I mean, his hand's almost empty. He's got enough mana. 
There we see Roman untapping the Mana Volt and just passing turn, playing a Bayou, by the way. But that's really bad news for Roman here. He's on 13. This is really bad. I think Bus is going to have a walkover here. He's going to animate again. He's going to attack for 6. That means he's going to drop to 7. Or can Roman do something here? I don't think he can. Boss again looking, uh, or Roman looking at his cards. What could he have here? No, he's just going to take the damage. going to drop to seven. I want to say maybe a crumble. And he's taking a card with his greed, taking two damage, dropping to 18. We're talking about boss here. And he's tapping to playing a Chaos Orb, making things worse. Is he going to flip here? He probably wants to control the mana here. He could flip on the Bayou, kind of trying to cut off the, the color black. That's probably what he's going to do. There we see the flip. Yes, there's the flip, and it is a hit. Nice altitude, and the Bayou is gone. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. You want to make sure that Roman cannot get back into this match. And now, again, he doesn't have black, so he's playing a Mistress Factory. He's on seven. Maybe he can... Yeah, okay, Shivan Dragon. That is cool, Roman. Shivan. I want to say maybe he can postpone it a little bit. Now Boss is thinking, am I going to take those counters off to create 1-1 one, one flyers? Yeah, I think that's a good decision. So he's going to make three tokens, three 1-1 one, one flying tokens. And uh, he's using his dice there. So those are three 1-1 one, one flyers. And he's drawing a card, going to play a Swamp. The question now is, is he going to attack with those 1-1 one, one flyers? Is he going to do something else? Tapping here for mana. And, oh, the Abyss. This is a huge problem for Roman. The Abyss, remember, in Shant World and during your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a creature, a non-artifact creature, I should say, which is very relevant here. So that means Boss doesn't have to sack his Tetravis or his tokens, but Roman will have to sack his Shivani or untapping the Mana Vault. I mean, is there any way out for Roman? He's already on seven. Next turn, he's probably going to take more damage, at least four from the Flyers. Looks like Roman's checking something. If he plays at least a forest, he can, or just a land, he can activate his assembly worker to block the assembly worker of boss in boss's turn and then maybe survive another turn. So there's a forest. And end step here, it looks like boss is activating his greed, drawing two extra cards for four lives. The cool thing about greed, I really think this, this card, you don't see it often anymore. You used to see it more. Um, is you can use it multiple times, right? One black, two life, draw a card. And you can use it any time when you play a black, uh, pay a black swamp. And there's an attack for four here. So we see Roman dropping to three. And what is he going to do? Is he going to recast the Sulkanar? He's got enough land. Then again, he's got a second to Abyss. That's a bad idea. He's going to do something else probably. Tapping a lot of lands. Are we going to see an X spell here? Oh, yeah, an expel, disintegrate. It is done. Roman is toast. And I have to be honest, Roman, it, it, there was nothing for you to get here in this game one. I mean, as soon as I saw Boss kind of ramping out with those two mocks and getting all the colors he needed, I was like, okay, man, you're not going to win this one. Because I think what Roman's deck wants to do, he wants to go faster. And, you know, when your opponent's playing the mocks and out, you know that's not going to happen. So it was a pretty one-sided game one year. Let's hope game two is um, a bit more exciting. Both players are going to shuffle up. So we're just going to wait until they're done here. Or actually, we're not going to wait. We're going to fast forward to game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's one game up for Boss. That means Roman is on the play. Starting really good here with a Birds of Paradise. Let's hope that Boss cannot cast a Bolt here. There's a Vice. Okay, the Vice is not going to deal that much damage. It's looking good for Roman thus far. Gonna go to 19, draw for turn. Let's see what he can do. If he has a mountain or a swamp, he can cast Xida here turn two, which would be pretty sweet. He can start drawing cards. Okay, City of Brass. Or does he have a better option? He's actually passing turn. I'm surprised. I would expect him to cast his Xida here. Maybe he's afraid of damage? Does he want to keep some kind of spell up to respond to whatever bus is playing. There we see a Chaos Orb. Really good card. And oh, there we see a Shatter. So that is what Roman wanted to do. He wanted to keep the Shatter open. Good decision here from Roman. Maybe he was anticipating 
uh, Bossier to attack with the factory and he wanted to keep his mana open to cast that Shatter and then he was even more in, 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 in more luck, I should say, that he could take care of that Chaos Orb. That's huge. And now he has to Xira, so next turn he can start um, gaining some life. Let's first see what Boss is going to do. Playing a Swamp here. And, ooh, Serendip Afrit, a 3-4 flyer from Arabian Nights. Does deal one damage to its controller, in this case Boss, during the upkeep. But this is a fatty. This is not great for Roman. And his boss again kind of outpacing him. Okay, there we see a terror. That's actually pretty good. I guess if I was boss, I would now... Yeah, I would just do it because you don't want to... You don't know that boss is not playing with any counter magic. And now he stepped out. So I understand this move. And he's attacking. That means that boss is now on 19. And there he's playing a mountain. I wonder if he's going to swing in. Yeah, why not? I mean, if he doesn't have something better to do. So he's going to swing in here. I'm expecting Roman to here go to 15. Exactly. The problem for Roman is here that next turn, Boss can cast his Solkanar. So if you're Roman, you kind of want to use your Xira. But on the other hand, you don't because you also want to put some pressure on. So he's going to drop here to 19. Oh, actually, going to drop to 13. Sorry. He's going to play a Suchi and he's going to attack. So the pressure is re real, and the nice thing is he can now use the Suchi to kind of block the Mishra's factory, but I don't uh, expect Boss here to attack, so he's going to play a City of Brass. He can now cast Solkanar the Swamp King, a 5-5 with Swamp Walk, and look at the side of Roman's board. He's got a Swamp. So that is a big problem for Roman. Ooh, a Time Walk. That is bad. Taking a damage, casting a Time Twister. Oh, Time Walk, Time Twister. That is really, really good. And again, we're seeing the power in full action. We saw that in Game 1. We're seeing this in Game 2 as well. The power being so decisive here. Both players shuffling up. The problem here for Roman, of course, is that Bus gets another turn after this one. So, you know, Bus is the one who gets to start with seven fresh cards in hand. And, <laughs> I mean... That's just totally going to destroy Roman, I assume. Piling up. And having seven in hand here. And you know, this is what happens sometimes, you know, when you when you play with an underpowered deck against a player with power. If they can find the power at the right moment, it can just be so decisive here. Because now he can cast Solkanar, or maybe he doesn't even want to because he's got more options. Also remember, Boss has that Black Vice out, so Roman's going to take, I, I guess, 3 damage next turn from the Vice, going to drop to 10. So even though Roman has a much better start than we saw in uh, Game 1... Oh, Mind Twist! That is so dirty! That is so dirty, Boss! Oh, man. Roman, Roman, if you're kind of leave the scene right now, I wouldn't blame you. This is just... Horrible. There's not much you can do against this. There's you did nothing wrong. Uh, you know, you you played the the best magic that you could possibly play with the deck that you have. But I mean, what can you do against this firepower? Because he's playing a mind twist for five years, so Roman can keep two cards, I guess. So he's going to take the two cards away that he's going to keep, and now he's going to show the cards that he's going to discard. Um, and one of them is a maze. A maze would have been absolutely great against the Swamp King. This is so bad. At least he takes his turn. He can deal 5 damage. So he can put Boss. I believe he's on 13. Now we don't see his life, but I believe he's going to be go to 13. And he can also attack, of course, with his Mistress Factory. I think I kind of would because I think you're out right now. Okay, he's going to draw a card. Okay, so what I wanted to say is I think is out is just deal as much damage as you can and hope to play an X-Spell to maybe finish it. So he's going to attack. So he's going to drop to, I believe, 14, which is still pretty high, I guess. And he's going to pass turn. So he's going to keep that factory at bay. And I'm now expecting Bust to play Solkanar and if, if, from his command zone. But if he doesn't, it means he's probably got even better options, which is not good news for, for Roman. So he's going through his hand. What could he have? Maybe another big creature that he wants to play instead of the uh, the Solkanar. Suchi, of course, is great against the Abyss of Boss, so I guess playing the Abyss isn't really going to 
do much good for him here. Playing a chain lightning here on the life total of Roman. Oh no, he's playing it on the Xira. Okay. So that's going to go back to the command zone. The problem with Xira, it's a really good commander, but it's just not as good when you're under pressure. It's really a card you want to play from kind of a control scenario. Although it's also good in aggro because you can draw the extra card, but you're kind of seeing usually when you're playing aggro, you're using all your mana to attack. You're constantly, uh, you know, doing something with your lands. So it's kind of a difficult card in that perspective. So I guess Boss is showing the Jade Statue now. So Jade Statue is a pretty cool card. You can pay three, uh, or is it two? I believe it's two or three, maybe two. And you can only do that during your combat, and then it turns into the, the statue comes alive and is being turned into a 3-6 creature. So he's right now going to tap the statue, and he's going to attack. I think this is a good decision. So we see Boss dropping to 10. And I think it's good because, yes, Roman is opening himself up for a counterattack with Mishra's Factory and Jade Statue, but what else can Roman really do in this scenario? He just has to deal as much damage as he can, hopefully draw a burn spell, and, and finish the game. I mean, he's on 12, Boss is on 10, he's already halfway his life total. You know, maybe he can make it. Who knows? So Boss here looking at the amount of cards in hand, showing it with that red dice, uh, die that he's got five cards in hand. What can he do here? Probably has tons of options, or else he would have cast a Solkanar already. Solkanar is going to cost him five. And oh, he plays a Fireball on the Suchi, perhaps. Yeah, on the Suchi. So there's no mana burn here, I believe. Although he can, of course, use the mana burn. If there if there's mana burn, he can use it to animate his Mishra's Factory. He's going to take damage here. Going to drop to nine. Interesting. And he's past turn. So we see Roman untap. What can he do? I mean, he's got five, six mana now, which is quite a lot. I believe he's still got a lot of cards in hand after that uh, time twister. Oh, no, he doesn't because there was a mind twist, of course. Yeah, how can I forget about that mind twist? Anyway, playing a shatter here on the statue. And he's going to deal two more damage. Okay, that's something. Boss is going to drop to eight. So slowly he's getting lower and lower in life total. I mean, Roman, if you're going to make this, I mean, that would be a great achievement. Because, I mean, seriously, after that uh, time walk, time twister, mind twist play from Boss, I mean, the fact that you're still in this is an accomplishment by itself. So, Boss, you're drawing a card. I mean, he still has so many cards in hand. It's crazy. I guess when you're boss, you're kind of thinking, I don't want to get any more damage. Or maybe you just want to find a way to finish it. I think that's going to be tough. Also looking at his mana, what if he has, for example, a Disintegrate in hand? He can deal six damage with the Disintegrate, so that's not really an option. Remember, he's on eight, I believe. So if he plays Solkanar, Roman still has that Icy untapped. He can tap the Solkanar, then again deal two damage with his Mishra, put boss on six. So it is kind of difficult here. And maybe boss has something in hand. Maybe he has a Shatter in hand and he just wants to keep mana open. To possibly deal with the factory. Although if you would have Shatter, you would probably deal with the Icy Manipulator. That's higher on your priority list. And Boss is really in the tank here. He knows, I mean, he knows he has this game. He can only lose this game, right? That's kind of probably how he feels after that, uh, you know, time walk, time twister, mind twist scenario. He knows I should win this now. But the fact is he's on eight. Roman's on nine. Roman's still in this. We see him tapping four. Playing a Juggernaut. Oh, I love a Juggernaut. Oh, he's going to take another damage. He's going to go to seven. Playing another creature. The Serenip Afrit. 
Three for flyer, also dealing him damage, of course. The good thing here is for Roman that he's got two blockers. And what is he gonna do? Oh, he's playing a terror. And then he can tap down. He's thinking about it though. There's, there are no other targets on the board, so I guess Terror on Serendip. Although, do you want to? Maybe you want to keep the Terror. If you're, yeah, no, no. I think what I would do is I would Terror the Serendip. Then you can tap the Juggernaut now, and you can attack for two, or you can be patient, and you can say I'm going to tap the Juggernaut later, and then the Juggernaut is destroyed because it cannot attack. That's another option, but then you would do it in the turn of boss before combat. There's a regrowth. Getting back to shatter. Is he gonna shatter? He's gonna shatter the juggernaut. That is interesting. And then he's gonna take it damage. He's gonna drop to seven. He's gonna attack. So I think boss is now on five. He's really low. Wow, is Roman gonna make it? I still feel that boss has the upper hand here. But, I mean, look at the mana. If, if, if Roman can find an X spell, he can now kill boss. He's got enough mana for, like, Fireball or Disintegrate to kill boss. That would make it 1-1. One, one. That would be kind of insane if that would happen. I wonder what cards boss has in hand. Probably lots of lands. So he's tapping 5, and there he is. Solkanar the Swamp King. Taking a damage, going to four, playing an ATOC. Wow. This is really getting close. Four life. Tapped out completely. And we see Roman having that one IC manipulator. The problem here is, is if Roman attacks, you know, taps, for example, uses the IC to tap the Swamp King, attacks with the 2-2, two -two, Bus is going to block on the ATOC, probably going to sack the Vice to it, and he's going to kill... The factory, so that's no longer an option here for Roman. He has... Ooh, Fireball! Is this a decision? It's a decision! He's won it! <laughs> oh, he's won it! I am so surprised, Roman, that you've got this one. I'm just... This is ridiculous. This is... Re I, I was giving a whole speech about sometimes you run into power and you're, you don't have power and that's the end of the game. It's not true. Forget what I said. Roman... I'm clapping for you, man. I think it's fantastic. And, and, and boss, coming from your side, it does happen. It has happened to me as well. Um, but I'm sure you cannot excuse me for kind of rooting for Roman here after the absolutely killer play you did with Time Walk, Mind Twist, um, sorry, uh, um, um, a Time Walk, Time Twister, and then a Mind Twist. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, so you can't blame me for rooting for Roman. And of course, because Roman won, it means it's 1-1. And we're gonna go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. Boss being on the play. And uh, wow, man, Roman still. That you won that game, insane. Let's see Boss here. Whoa, what an explosive start. Mox Ruby, Mox Sapphire, Factory, and into an oi, 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 often troll. Two, two, one red to regenerate. A great start here from Roman. Uh, sorry, from uh, Boss, not Roman, but Boss. Uh, Roman doesn't have a really great start. He's just starting with one Swamp. And Boss can attack here for four already, deciding to only attack for two. Doesn't want to take the risk. Or does he have a better play to make? I guess the last one. There is a Greed. Wow, what a great start from Boss here. Maybe this game is going to be done, going to be finished really, really quickly. He's actually changing his mind. He's okay. Oh, of course he couldn't. Okay, he played the wrong land. The thing is with these uh, these games, yes, it's kind of an online tournament, but there's a lot of like, you play in a relaxed setting, right? Uh, players are very um, very relaxed with each other and, and, and with the way it goes. And I think that's the way of old school. There is a mountain being played. Let's see if Roman can do anything back here. Maybe he's got a terror, you know, those terrors are great for those trolls. The problem here, of course, for Roman is that if Boss manages to get another land, there's the land, he can now play Solkanar the Swamp King, which is a 5-5 with Swamp Walk. So that's a huge problem for Roman. Instead, he's going to animate attack for 4, so I'm kind of expecting him to play something out for 3. Maybe a Wheel of Fortune or a Time Twister? There we see a Shatter on the Factory. 
Kind of stops the bleeding a little bit. Gonna take two, gonna drop to 16. And there we see tapping three. Okay, Wheel of Fortune, I guess, because he no longer has a blue mana. Yeah, there's a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, I kind of saw that coming because of that decision to attack instead of cast Sulkanar. Ooh, look at that. What a good hand there for Roman. Especially that Disintegrate to take care of the Troll, but also the Chaos Orb could have taken care of the Sulkanar. I mean, he had answers there. But the answers are gone now. At least Roman can start to play. So seven in hand, pass turn to Roman. Probably found a land here. If it's a force, he can cast Xida, but hopefully he's got something better. Terror on the Troll would be great. A blocker would be great. Unfortunately, he had to also discard the Setch Troll. That was also in Roman's hand. That would have been a great uh, play now. He's looking in his hand. Maybe he's got an Animate Dead or a, re um, a Regrowth. I don't think there's really anything you want to animate that at this point in the game. Maybe the Setch Troll, but remember, it, it also gets minus 0, minus 1. And if he does that, he doesn't have a black open to regenerate it. I, if you have another option, I would go for the other option. Tapping 2 here, playing Fower Stone, using the Fower Stone, tapping a black, casting a Terror here. That's pretty good because and you're ramping and you're taking care of a threat in the same turn. So you're basically, you're doing two things, literally. Which is always good. And uh, Boss taking his turn here. But he's got a full grip of cards. Eight cards in hand and that greed. So he's very likely to, of course, play a land. Then he'll have five cards. So he's playing a land. What else is he going to do here? Take a damage. Going to go to 19. Play Soul Canard the Swamp King. Sulkanar is just so good. Remember, it's got Swamp Walk as well. So he can run all over Roman here. Roman being on 16, still pretty high up. After that explosive start of Bus, I have to say that uh, Roman kind of managed with the Terror to kind of uh, do some damage control. And also the Shatter, of course, on the factory earlier in the game. He's got five mana now. What he needs is something big. Okay, there's a regrowth. Is he going to take the Setch Troll? Oh, he's going to take the Orb, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And he can use it on the Sulkanar. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Oh, is it a hit? It's very close. I think. Oh, he's going to zoom in. Oh, it's a hit. The thing is, and I mean, you can disagree with this. Um, the rule is that sleeve also counts. I know that Chaos Orb is one of the most discussed cards in the format. And uh, like real Magic players, we all have different opinions about this. Uh, Roman, I hope you can kind of zoom out. Okay, Roman is <laughs> blacked out. Now he's black. He's gone. Anyway, what I wanted to say, there we see Roman. Hi, Roman. Okay, now we've got the board back. Uh, but what I wanted to say, I'm personally really happy that there just is an errata on Chaos Orb that like basically everybody kind of agrees on. Um, and that we can just play with Chaos Orb. That's my opinion. But I, I understand if, especially when you used to play with Chaos Orb back in the olden days, you're probably thinking, yeah, but sleeve, come on. And it wasn't meant to be used this way. I, I do get all those arguments, but I think you want the card to be playable and you want to see the card in games. And, and it's kind of what they went for. And I understand that. So here's a pass after the activation of Chaos Orb. And again, Roman kind of manages his way, you know, back into this match. Uh, which surprises me, but it's still looking really good for Buster. Remember, he still has the Greed. He's probably going to get more than enough mana. Going to take two damage. I believe he's going to drop to 17 now. Um, he's got more than enough mana to probably recast the Sulk in our next turn. There we see a Surrendip. Again, that powerhouse. And it's just really tough for Roman because every time Buster's throwing new problems and problems and problems in the way of Roman, and Roman has to try to find a solution. And there we see Boss is going to go through the motion. And I guess he's passing turnout, so there's an untap. I mean, Roman still has a lot of cards in hand. At least Boss hasn't managed to mind twist him yet. And remember, Roman is also playing with mind twist. But it just seems that every game, you know, Boss definitely has the pressure on Roman. It's not the other way around. 
And this is kind of what I talked about in the deck tech, that like in Roman's deck in this matchup, those, you know, script sprites, curd apes, uh, Argovian pixies, I guess pixies you can still use to block artifact creatures with, you know, can be quite good, but as those smaller creatures just doesn't seem as good in this in this matchup because boss is going as fast as Roman or maybe even faster because of the of the power the Moxen. And there we see Roman. It looks like he's gonna play something. Okay, he's gonna cast his Xira. So his commander is here in the game and he's gonna tap three. What is he? Oh, he's gonna cast Untamed Wilds. Okay, of course he's changing his mind. That makes sense because then he doesn't have to take a damage. So he's gonna go through his deck. And he's gonna cast a mountain. It looks like Buss is looking up um, the Untamed Wilds. It's art by Nene Thomas. Also did Hercules uh, Recall. Really talented artist. Also made some beautiful art in Ice Age. So we see Roman shuffling up and then casting the Xena. That's gonna save him a point of damage. You never know what it's good for. And Buss, of course, taking a damage from his own Surrender, dropping to, I guess, 17? And swinging in here. So that would mean Roman is going to drop to 12 here. Oh, whoa. What's going on here? Oh, he's going to block Giant Grove. There was a little glitch in the system. But look at this. Oh, I love seeing this stuff. The idea that Xida Arian, like this kind of noble, I don't know, what is it, kind of wasp kind of figure, all of a sudden gets huge and gobbles up that surrender. I love it, man. I love it. And of course, Boss is a little bit lower, by the way, than 18, because he also used a greed, so he's on 16. And, ooh, playing the Chain Lightning. That means the Xida is still going to die. Good move from Boss here. Playing an Ivory Tower. That's a really nice combo with greed, by the way, because he can fill his hand for basically just one uh, life. That is pretty cool. I haven't seen that combination before, Greed and Ivory Tower. That is really nice, boss. Thank you for showing it here on the channel. That is actually pretty inspirational. I think it's pretty cool. So Ivory Tower, if you don't know, uh, you gain a life for all the cards in your hand above four. So if you've got five cards in hand, you gain a life. If you've got six cards in hand, you gain two life. So that means that, I mean, he's got four cards in hand now. So if he would use Greed to draw a card, he would have to pay two life. But then he would gain life back from the Ivory Tower. So that's actually pretty cool. So that means basically greed is only going to cost him one life instead of two life. So I believe Bust right now is on 15. Roman playing a Demonic Tutor here. Ooh, this is so interesting. Again, Roman is kind of getting back into the game here. Copy Artifact on the Ivory Tower, by the way. So that means actually that then Boss can kind of use his Greed without having to pay life for it. I'm really liking this combination Ivory Tower Greed Boss. Really, really cool to see. And I wonder what Roman's going to look up. I don't believe he's playing a Shatterstorm main. I don't think so. And tapping five. Oh, Mind Twist. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, Roman. You got twisted in game two. Fair enough. And look at that. Dropping Nevenerol's Disc is one of the cards. And playing a Lanora Elves. And Boss drawing two cards. And he's going to get that life back from the Ivory Tower. So there's no need for him to change anything. He's going to stay on, se on 17. He's going to play a Mox Jet. Going to tap a lot of mana to recast the Solkanar. Again, Solkanar has Swamp Walk. I'm just going to keep saying that because it's relevant, because Roman has a Swamp. If Roman can find a Hammerheim, Hammerheim can take care of a, of a Landwalk ability. So that would be just awesome for Roman. Going to go through his graveyard. Does he have a regrowth? Didn't he already play the regrowth? I think he did to get the Chaos Orb back to kill the Solkanar the first time. What's really good against uh, these command in these commander formats, by the way, is um, the card from the Arabian Nights in Enchantment that you can exile um, target creature, or actually face out, not exile, but face out. So that's why it's pretty good. Forgot the name right now, but if you know the name, let let me know in the comments below. There's the Exira, so Roman recasting the Exira. It's not really going to help him. I guess Roman probably has an anime debt. 
Hmm, it's going to be difficult. I mean, what would you get back? Maybe the Setch Troll? Problem is he needs to stop the Sulkanar. That is a big problem. So we see Bossier going through the cards in his graveyard. Yes, it's taken back the Setch Troll, so it gets minus O minus zero. No, minus one minus zero, so it's now a two three with regeneration. So it is a good blocker, but yeah, the problem here is that Bus is gonna gain life from the Ivory Towers. And he can use his greed to draw extra cards, and he has an unblockable Sulkanar. And he actually gets life from the Sulkanar as well. Every time a black spell is being cast, he gains a life. So I think Bus is pretty much up to 20 now again. And we see Roman dropping here to eight. What can he do? And drawing a card, taking two damage. Looking at his hand. He still has so many, that greed is just great with this combination. Also greed in general with Sulkanar, just any life gain makes greed a lot better. So Roman here gonna untap. I mean, obviously he's gonna attack with the troll. Probably first gonna dig for, for answers using his Exceda to draw an extra card. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. He has to find a way to kind of kill that Sulkanar. That's top priority right now. He's going to attack for three here. He's going to pump it up. So at least he deals some damage here. Four damage. It's kind of hard to see the amount of cards in hand by boss. And if he's just going to pass, then it's looking really bad here for Roman. Remember, boss can on end step activate his greed twice, take damage, gain that life back because of the ivory towers. So I'm kind of expecting him to use his greed, maybe even three times, why not? Oh, this is nice. This is Urborg, and what Urborg can do, it can, I believe, take away Swamp Walk, which is relevant. And we see a quick strip mine here by Roman. He doesn't want that. Wow, that is pretty cool. Unfortunately for Roman, it gets taken away, and now he's gonna go to three, I guess. So he's got one more turn, or are we going to see a burn spell? Yeah, Psionic Blast, Psionic Blast. That is too bad, but man, I really, really enjoyed these games, man. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Boss. And I apologize, Boss, if I was rooting a little bit too much for Roman, but it's just kind of the thing I do naturally when I see one person playing powered and one person playing underpowered. Uh, but I have to say, Buzz, you built a beautiful deck. Roman also a strong deck, played really, really good. And this was the episode for today. So if you enjoy Brawl, make sure to tune back in right here on Timmy Talks. We've got a lot more matches coming next week. I'm going to show you a top 16, two brand new decks, two brand new players. So if you enjoyed this format, stay tuned. Uh, and also before you go, please consider subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment. All those things uh, help and they are completely free. So you're helping me as a content creator uh, doing what I do, helping to grow the channel. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And there's one other thing you can do. You can become a sponsor of the show. It already starts with $1. How does that work? Simple, click on the Patreon card that's appearing right now, the info card, and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can find all the information and you can support me just like uh, Roman and Boss here are doing as well. The cool thing is if you support me, uh, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. And also you get to join the Timmy Talks Discord. You get to join into Timmy Talks events such as this tournament. So there's just a lot of perks when you become a Patreon, uh, patron via Patreon. So please consider doing that. Um, and if not, it's all good. You know, uh, thank you for watching. Anyway, um, I guess this is it. This is, I've said everything I wanted to say. So now let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic, our wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go.
Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.